Who saw the Olympics opening ceremony? Right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Olympics, what the Olympics is supposed to be about, ladies and gentlemen, is about human solidarity. It's about trying to draw the world together through sport and the celebration of honest competition, ladies and gentlemen. That's, yeah, thank you. And the point about the Olympics is it gives every country an opportunity to bring, to bring the best of itself forward. It's all right, Jesse, I'm going to put it up here. No, it's all right. To bring the best of itself forward, right? You're supposed to show the best of who you are. Like we remember the Greek opening ceremony or the Chinese opening ceremony, or the Spanish opening ceremony, or, Brit or England, Britain's fluffed attempt at trying to celebrate the best of England. But the fact of the matter is, for some strange baffling reason, France decided to humiliate itself in front of the world. And rather than show the best of itself, it showed the worst of itself. It humiliated itself. They tried to tap into the idea of the revolutionary spirit, the grotesqueness of the guillotine, the idea of throwing off religion, the idea of celebrating humanity and celebrating freedom and individuality and liberty and the way that they expressed that was through paedophilia and the sexualization of children and through celebrating mental illness ladies and gentlemen they tried to tap into something and allowed the french people allowed this glorious moment for the republic to be hijacked by a bunch of degenerates following a, a, a sexual cult that is an anti-woman and anti-Christianity and a risk to children. And that's what we saw. It was grotesque, it was ugly, it was poorly executed. I mean, it was a shambles. It was an actual, even if that's what they wanted to do, they did it badly. <laughs> It was a huge embarrassment, embarrassment to France. Additionally, the Olympic Games are not supposed to be political, but they used this Olympic opening ceremony to push the politics of transgenderism, which goes against the spirit of what the Olympics is about. We saw the sexualization of children and the celebration of paedophilia in that opening ceremony. This is not something to be proud of. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you a bit about what blasphemy is. So, in Leviticus 24, 10, uh, 24 10 to 16 it says this if you want to use up this space guys here feel free use up this space here guys so it says this in Leviticus now an Israelite woman's son whose father was an Egyptian went among the people of Israel and the Israelite woman's son and a man of the Israelites fought in the camp and the Israelite woman's son blasphemed the name and cursed. They brought him to Moses. His mother's name was Shalomith and the daughter of Dibri of the tribe of Dan. And they put him in custody till, until the will of the Lord should be clear to them. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, 
Bring him out of the camp, the one who cursed, and let all who heard him lay their hands on his head, and let all the congregation stone him, and speak to the people of Israel, saying, Whoever curses his God shall bear his sin. Blasphemy, according to the scripture, is a direct affront, a direct curse, mocking of the attributes, actions, titles, or names of God. And what we saw at the opening ceremony, when they mocked the Last Supper, was to mock, ladies and gentlemen, was to mock the, 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 the very act of the institution of the Holy Eucharist. This was a blasphemy, ladies and gentlemen. In Isaiah 36, 20 we read, Who among all the gods of these lands have delivered their lands out of my hand, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? This is connected to a story in Isaiah 36, where Sennacherib, king of Assyria, in his attempt to demoralize Jerusalem before he attacked it, after pointing out the Assyria's many victories, he said, who of all the gods of these countries have been able to save their lands from me? How then can the Lord deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? In other words, he blasphemed God because he challenged God to a duel and he said, I will be victorious over Israel. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in Romans 17, Romans chapter 2, 17, 24, we read, But if you call yourself a Jew and rely on the law and boast in God and know his will and approve what is excellent, because you are instructed from the law, and if you are sure that you yourself are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of children, having in the law the embodiment and knowledge of the truth, you then who teach others, do not teach yourselves. While you preach against stealing, do you steal? Who say that one who must not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? One who abhors idols, do you not rob temples? As Christians, we must flee from blasphemy. If we teach others not to blaspheme, we ourselves must not be participants in blasphemy. The Olympic Games started out of an act of blasphemy against the Christian faith. What, therefore, should our response be as Christians? Now, a lot of the soy boy church, a lot of the limp-wristed brigade of the church will just tell you that we should pray and we should fast. I have nothing against praying and I have nothing against fasting. But if that's all we can do, then I say we have failed. Because in the Lord's Prayer we pray, Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed means to make holy the name of God. It's a positive action to make holy the name of God. And so as Christians, we must do more than pray and fast about what happened at the Olympic ceremony. Weak-willed and spineless Christians will try to create a theology around doing nothing except praying because their cowardice guides their theology. But there is more that we can do. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I want to point out some of the things, I want to reference some of the things in Scripture connected to blasphemy. In the book of Acts, a king spoke like a god, and the people said, he, this is not a man speaking, but a god speaking, and God struck him down dead. 
In the book of Acts, Ananias and Sapphira lied to the Holy Spirit and God struck him down dead, struck them down dead. In the book of Acts, a, a person spoke up against the apostles, harassing them as they preached the gospel. And by the command of God, they struck them dumb so that they could not speak. And when, ladies and gentlemen, certain Samaritans refused to accept our Lord and his teaching, disrespecting him in the process, the apostles said, shall we call down fire on heaven and have them destroyed? And Jesus told them, no. So what do we gather from these stories? One, that judgment that leads to harm, we leave to God. We cannot harm those people or the Olympics in a violent way, in a way that causes death or destruction. We must leave that to God. Just as, Satan, just as the angel Michael said to Satan, let God be your judge, when they argued over the grave of the prophets. But as Christians, we must make the name of God hallowed. We cannot allow this to go without response. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I hope Freddie and all the others publish this uh, talk first. I hope they share it and I hope someone translates it into France. And I hope that you will all get involved in calling for this. That we must call for the boycott and the disruption of the Olympic Games. Boycott and disruption. Turn off your TVs. Don't watch the Olympics. Discourage everybody you know from watching the Olympics. If you go and visit your friend and they're watching the Olympics, say to them, I'm sorry, I can't be in the same room as this. I'll come back when you're not watching the Olympics. And hopefully they'll turn it off because they value you more than themselves. But, ladies and gentlemen, every Christian who is competing in the Olympics, volunteering in the Olympics, working in the Olympics, working auxiliary in the Olympics, can do all that they can to disrupt the Olympics. So for example, let me give some examples of what Christians should be doing and what we should call to be doing. My voice is spent, so I'm gonna lower my voice. If you can't hear me, please move in. So here are things that we can do. Every Christian politician should be complaining and objecting to President Macron for the offence caused to their country. The President of Hungary, the President of Poland, the President of Armenia, the President of Lebanon, the President of any country that considers itself Christian should be complaining to Macron about this international offence. We should call for the boycotting, the boycotting of the French Olympics. Any Christian business that is funding the French Olympics should now immediately withdraw its funding. If you are working for a company that is funding the French Olympics, you should call your CEO to remove its funding. We should all boycott the businesses of, we should boycott the businesses that are funding the Olympics and organize a campaign for such a boycott. In all of your social media, you should call out the hypocrisy that has just been demonstrated. Because if they had insulted Islam, what would have happened? The politicians would have been saying that this is wrong. The politicians would have been saying that this is intolerant, that this is offensive. Is it not offensive to us as Christians what they did about the Lord's Supper? Why the double standards of these progressive bigots, these progressive ignorance, these progressive hypocrites 
who teach tolerance only when it suits them, that teach inclusion only when it suits them. All of those politicians that celebrate the Olympics, you should be calling out their hypocrisy on social media. Ladies and gentlemen, Christian athletes, I invite and I call upon every Christian athlete who wins a medal at the point that they give your medal to you, take it off and chuck it on the ground and stamp on it and then do the sign of the cross so that the world can see that you don't accept what the Olympics choose. Don't be a Judas. Don't choose gold, silver and bronze over Jesus Christ. Chuck your medals on the floor, stamp on them and then make the sign of the cross to show why you are offended. If you're not willing to do that, Christian athletes, mock the competition. Run down the track like a transvestite dancer to mock the competition. Put out the French flag and use it and stamp on it and walk on it to show that you are offended by what the French Republic did to the Christian faith. Every Christian who is a spectator, an athlete, should boo the French national anthem. Don't stand for it, sit for it. Boo the, national, the French national anthem at all sporting events from now until the time that the French president apologises for this blasphemy. No French national anthem should go unbooed by a Christian. And that includes French Christians as well. You should boo the French national anthem. Christian volunteers working in the Olympics should sabotage it. I don't actually know what a volunteer does in the Olympics. I guess it's giving directions. Well, give the wrong directions. Maybe it's escorting the athletes to the right place. Well, escort them to the wrong place, ladies and gentlemen. As Christians, we should interrupt the events, run into the track, disrupt the events, until the French president apologises for what they did at the Last Supper, ladies and gentlemen. Be civilly disobedient, but harm no one. If you are a Christian broadcaster running a camera, turn the camera to the sky, then go and get yourself a coffee. If you're a Christian who's in charge of which cameras to go to, Turn them all off, disrupt these Olympic Games and turn them, ladies and gentlemen, into the most chaotic shambles of an Olympic Games that the world has ever seen. Ladies and gentlemen, we can respond as Christians. We must respond as Christians. The whole world is watching how we respond as Christians. We don't need to insult transgender people because that is cheek for cheek, that's revenge. We don't need to use violence because Christ commanded us not to. But what we must do, ladies and gentlemen, is not be silent. No one will take the Christian church seriously until the Christian church takes itself seriously ladies and gentlemen and so I call upon all Christians to boycott the Olympics don't watch it don't celebrate it don't socialize with those that are watching it until they stop and if you are in the Olympics in any capacity do everything that you can as a Christian to disrupt the Olympics and to demonstrate your unwillingness to participate in these Olympics, including disrupting the games themselves. So, for example, let's say you're a Christian and you know that your opponent is a Christian. 
rather than actually competing, just turn it into a tap, tap, turn the whole competition into a non-competition. And then when the judges tell you off, as they are telling you off, just keep doing the sign of the cross until they see why you are doing what you are doing. That is how we respond, not just praying. Organise protests outside of the events, disrupt the events until the French president apologises.